All right, so welcome to this video. Uh, in this one, we're going to go over basically critique and look at all the submissions from the uh, Patreon's first challenge. You know, if you're watching this video, then you already know about the Patreon challenge because you're in my Patreon. Uh, but yes, so this monthly challenge here, uh, you know, I saw a lot of really great entries. It was really awesome to see also so many people working on uh, you know, a concept that I designed, and it was really, it was really cool. It was interesting to see where people took it. It was, uh, there was a lot of things I didn't expect, and also things I was expecting. And uh, so I wanted to kind of go over some of those things, and then also I'm going to go into critiques and announce the winners at the end. So, with that said, uh, yeah, uh, thanks for participating, everybody. You know, it was really awesome experience to see, and uh, hopefully you guys want to participate in the next one. So. Basically, if you're watching this, you weren't, you know, privy to the challenge. This is uh, the concept that everybody had to work from. And basically, I kept it pretty loose. Some of the forms aren't very well described. Um, and so there's a lot of room for interpretation. And that's kind of what I was looking for with this challenge. You know, one of the signs of a very good 3D artist and a designer is that they can take the source material and elevate it you know oftentimes I, I i see a lot of 3d artists starting out and also experienced even who really lack the art fundamentals to take a design and improve upon it uh as far as understanding things like form understanding you know volumes understanding bevels all of these things and no, knowing how to even make them better than the sketches sometimes. And I, I've seen also the opposite, where 3D artists can do better jobs than the concept artist and when they bring it truly into 3D. And so uh, for me, you know, I'm looking for a lot of the subtleties, a lot of the little tiny touches when it comes to how you represent form. For me, this is actually what I really wanted to see in this contest. Um, and I'm also going to go over some, you know, patterns I saw that people routine, routinely did based on my concept which is also kind of a, a situation that's interesting uh, because basically when we m you know have concepts we have to copy them but if the forms aren't clear how do we handle that and so this contest basically shows how a lot of people try to handle certain challenges and certain uh, poorly explained parts as far as how I represented form in the drawing and so it's really interesting to see and it was interesting to see the patterns, and so I'll talk about some of those things. All right, so uh, before I get into it, I also uploaded this here, and this is basically just talking about you know what all these parts are, and it was helping people to have a general idea. So I also gave a little bit more to the brief, but yeah, so basically this is the concept. Let's go through these entries, and then let's give some feedback to them. So. I'm just going to go through each one, one at a time, and then I'm going to kind of summarize a lot of the things that I saw, and then we'll talk about the next challenge. So, all right, first person, e to go uh, He was in the mentorship tier for a while, and not during this challenge, though, so he will not be part of the uh, mentorship tier drawing. Uh, but yeah, so I'm going to just kind of go through this, and basically I wanted to say... <coughs> some critiques and I'm gonna do this for each work I really like how he took the uh, source concept and how he inferred what would be on the back side of the model you know adding the vents and things like this doing a skeletal structure on the inside it's very interesting you know it's uh it's interesting to see also how people were sort of uh, improvising but also drawing from each other's ideas inside the challenge which is really cool to see um, but I think overall for me, you know, I, I, I think the materials are some of the best in the challenge and I think you did the wheel exactly how I wanted it to be, which is actually one of the things that I was really looking forward to is how people did the wheels. And from what I can tell, it looks like you did a slight form change inwards. And for me, this was actually one of the most important things is how people handle the wheel forms. Did they make them flat? Did they not? And now I gave people uh, freedom to, 
redesign the models a bit, you know, redesign the the uh, the concept. But yeah, I like this design because you know it was my design. But I also like that you did it this way. I am going to judge things not just based on if they follow my design or not. So that's cool. I like it. Second thing. Uh, materials don't count in this render, but I do like that there's, you know, I can actually see what's going on in the renders. That's nice plus, but let's go into critique. So overall, a very strong submission, <coughs> and it was also modeled quite quickly, quickly, and there's a lot of nice thought put into it, which I appreciate. But let's take a look at, since it's, you know, a more close representation of my concept, let's compare it a little bit closer to my concept as well. And I wanted to talk a little bit about some of the things that I saw happening a lot. So the first thing that I see a lot in almost all of these is how people handled this. Now, in perspective, uh, it's, it's not very clear what the forms are on this front piece. And so this is where I saw most people struggling with. But in my head, and how I see it, is that it's completely flat. And what I was actually trying to represent was basically a, a plane change here and that this goes in a bit and so it stays flat the second thing I also noticed a lot what I actually wanted these dark shadows to be is not an inset I wanted it to be a thick bevel on a panel cut so it's this piece is still flush or on the same plane as this one and so it's okay if people don't do that. I'm fine with it. That was my intention. The second thing also was interesting to see how people handled and why I think this was a really nice uh, concept for this because it's not perfectly uh, in perspective. And so there's room for the artist to really, to really see where artists take the design. And so, for example, to me, this was another one of these places. Basically, I see this as a plane change where it's getting pushed inward. And so it's going to be in a more narrow than the width of the body about here. And so that was really important for me. Now, if we go back to this concept, I feel like overall, I think the forms could use a lot of work. I think you went too far into bevels. Like I see a lot of small bevels here. And the thing with small bevels and going straight into these bevels is that you're basically restricting yourself to the forms that you've chosen and it's a very big problem i think that while you did pay attention to details you know you you paid attention to having a subtle arc here which i think could have been a slight bit more you know maybe like something like this as far as like you know how the the wheel bulges outwards i think that this is something that could have uh, been improved but overall for me I have I have a problem with the forms because they're a bit too boxy, they're a bit too simple. And I would have liked to see you know a more interesting uh silhouette or rather a more interesting use of form. So for me I feel like this is a bit of a while it's a unique interpretation, I feel like this uh big curve is a bit too large of a curve and it doesn't fit the overall uh, very angular nature of a lot of the rest of the design and so I I had wi I wish that other people had uh, also not done this I saw this on a few other uh, work in progresses and I feel like this is the most crucial part so f I think that while it's fine that you took um, liberty I would have liked to see maybe a better design uh, I feel like this curve is a bit too random and a bit too swoopy, especially when everything is so boxy. Uh, as far as how you handled some of these stuff, like I think avoiding a lot of, you know, when two very large pieces meet, the first question you should ask yourself, so like the body and the handle, is how do they transition? And so in this case, I would have liked to have seen a lot more attention to subtle bevels because you're going so high into or so uh, quickly into these um, these small bevels and it instantly locks you in. But then you're also not going crazy on these medium sized bevels, but then you're going crazy on the large scale bevels. And so I, I 
you know, I think it takes a lot of courage to make a strong shape like this. And so I, I appreciate that. But I think that overall, you know, while there are small bevels, I would have liked to see a lot more rounding of the shapes. I would have liked to also see um, a bit more finesse, like a bit more polish to a lot of these details. You know, I, I, I would have liked to maybe see some of them being inset with a nice fat bevel that really reflects the light than just kind of low tech looking bolts. Like these are much better, I think, than these. I do like that this bevel is faded off and that the edge one though is crispy. This is nice. I would say one other critique I have is I feel like, you know, you need to work on just medium forms a bit, like trying to push out the, uh, the forms between all of these pieces. And that way there's a, a bit more of a volume to them because right now they're actually, sorry about that, they're actually very um, hard edged and there's not a lot of form representation going on. You know, there's no nice medium sized bevels here. And these are some of the things that I would be looking for generally in a, in a nice model and design. And so uh, I'm going to be giving this feedback a few times. And so it's not just for uh, your your design, but yeah, overall, I think this is something that is very important to me is like how people are treating these, you know, smaller forms, these and designing them, but also how they're treating the big ones. Like I would have liked to see this less blocky, less focus on the small bevels and more focus on the medium. Um, you know, this is something that doesn't count towards the judging because I said that I'm not judging ba renders at all, which is true. But generally in sci-fi, you have to be careful and just art in general. You have to be careful with your lights. And in this case, you're using a lot of lights in places that are uh, unnecessary. For example, you know, there, there's no reason really to have a light on the handles. And I think on the batteries is totally logical and maybe a small light on the body. But try to minimize them and keep them very small and be very careful with them. And this goes for everybody. You know, lights and sci-fi can either make it really great or it can ruin it. And so when you add lights, always remember that a light is designed as an indicator to tell the user information. And that's what's important. Uh, okay, so let's go over here. So I like some of these things. I like that you have like this, uh, you know, bent kind of metal stuff. I think it would have been nice to see uh, some more finesse though with like how these details are integrated. I don't like that they're just pieces that are shoved on top of the simple body underneath. That was something I was looking for that they're integrated a bit more as panels like for example here I would have liked it if this piece was pushed in and then uh, around a recess like this let me draw the forms and so then it fa it has a you know a bevel here and so that this bevel would really catch the light when it hits it you know right now it's just kind of standing on top and so overall, that's something I noticed, you know, you're, you're pushing in, you're, you're uh, stacking a lot of your details. And I think it's better to integrate them like you did here. So this is good. One other thing I would have liked to see is uh, in the concept, I pulled out this and made this a chamfer. And so it kind of uh, twists from flat to uh, curve and so that was something I was definitely you know hoping to see from a lot of people you can see it here how it's being uh, twisted inwards and I think that this helps to really finesse it and add a bit of detail that isn't uh, overwhelming you know it's overwhelming nice medium form change and then I guess my final critique would be uh, my final critique 
would be I just think that in general the uh, proportion of this panel is very important to me and it, right now it's a bit even and maybe not in a way you'd expect uh, and so for me it's even in the fact that basically one it's a square I don't like squares because squares squares can be cool but you have to know how to use them in contrast with a lot of other things but squares are not a directional shape they're the same length on every side and so one thing that was really important to me when I designed this was that it was a bit more rectangular and also asymmetrical so you see that it's smaller on this side and larger on this one so I think that if you had maybe if this design had been approached uh, or the model had just been a little bit wider here it would have been great and maybe a bit shorter I think it would have looked a lot better and a bit more dynamic And then, yeah, of course, like I already said, you know, tapering these inwards. So my main feedback, slow down. You did good. You put good thought into things. You were thinking about things, but slow down. Focus on the block out. Focus on the forms. Don't rush into small bevels. Nine times out of ten, I think I see this from most artists, that they're always rushing into bevels. Don't. It is not going to help you in the end, and it will really help you to focus on the block out as long as possible. So, yep, that's uh, Ichigo's uh, submission. It's cool. I like it. It's a good job. Uh, let's see. Just want to make sure. Okay, so I didn't post on ArtStation. I'm going to pimp everybody who posts on ArtStation. All right. So, next one, Flip Flap. That's his name on uh, Patreon so or on Discord, so I don't know his real name. But uh, yeah, so like I said, rendering wasn't part of this, uh, but let's just talk about you know how you handled a lot of these form changes and the designs. So uh, I would say basically you did some of the things that I was looking for. You know, it was really interesting. Actually, now that I'm looking at it a bit closer, you know, you actually handled a different form change than I had come up with, but you managed to, to make sense of the concept quite well uh, by deciding to use this line here as the axis that the form change will occur on and rotating the space inward. So, you know, that's, that's great. I actually really like this improv improvisation of the uh, design. Good job. Um, it was interesting, you know, how it's, it's a pattern that people were pulling the shape out, even though in the silhouette view, uh, it's not really apparent, but it's more because of where these parts meet in the concept that people have this impression. And so personally, I'm not a huge fan of this choice. I know a lot of people did it, but that's why it was interesting to see because it was a question that people had about how the concept was drawn and so it was interesting to see how people handled it and a lot of people chose to do this and so I have nothing against it uh, but I I guess I wouldn't do it uh, in combination maybe with this curve shape because it distorts the curve shape too much and I think it makes it a bit ugly but overall you're pretty well representing the concept uh, I can definitely tell you held off on your bevels a bit longer, but I also have the same feedback as E2Go's uh, design where I think that these are a bit flat, you know, in my concept, I was definitely looking for a slight bit more volume, even like on a small scale between all of these pieces and not just looking for uh, harsh lines. It's very important for me uh, to see this. But I do like that you integrated all of these shapes. That's great. I think you could have taken it a step further and really finessed like a lot of these bevels, you know. Maybe make the circle smaller. But uh, let me load up Fusion so I can give some examples while I talk. But I would say like, for example, you know, having these fillets go out like this and so that the light really catches a lot of these edges is really where you're going to start seeing your design pop, you know. A lot of these edges are very harsh and they're not catching the light. 
and it's a big problem. You know, you have some nice, subtle, s medium size plane changes, I think. Maybe it's a material change, but it looks like a plane change here. And it's good. It's catching the light, but you, you need to focus more on not just using regular bevels on every hard edge. You're not taking advantage of uh, all of the details that you have, and it's one reason why it's still not quite there. Overall, I think you did a good job. I like how you handled the wheel. I think it's a bit more hard and angular than I was picturing it, but I like the pattern. I think the pattern's cool. It's a nice design. Uh, again, I would have liked to maybe see just a bit of softness on these forms and maybe a bit better proportion on this uh, angular piece. You can see right now, if we look at the uh, size here, they're just kind of even. And if we look here, they are a bit even, but I think that the circle is just a bit smaller. You know, I, I put made it smaller on this side to imply that it's recessed because this one's longer. And so this is, has force shortening just a bit. Um, but yeah, I think you could just finesse it a bit more. And again, having medium sized bevels. I don't like that everything is these hard edges. And I think it's something that, you know, people who do game art are definitely struggle with a lot. Like everything is a hard edge. Remember, make the light reflect. Like push these bevels a bit more. Make them, uh, like here, for example, you know, all of these are very hard angular edges. And so they're not going to interest, uh, reflect the light in an interesting way. So let me give a quick example. Ah, cool. So all my fusion shortcuts just got reset. Uh, so that's cool. Um, but anyway, I'll just pretend that's not true. All right. So basically what I'm saying is, you know, let's say I have a detail like this. Don't. Okay. Awesome. I love resetting my settings in the middle of a video. Just need to pin a few things. Okay. All right, cool. So yeah, basically, let's say you have some sort of shapes like this, right? It's super important that you don't just go ahead and be like, okay, I have my shape. See, add some small bevels here and then just bevel it. All right, it's done. You know, like imagine if you're looking at it from here, it's like very weak. The light barely hits it. You can barely see it. And so maybe it's not necessarily the most realistic thing, but if you want to make stuff that's cool and it can be realistic, you know, try and have some stuff that's reflecting the light better. Finesse your small bevels. Have some of them be chamfers. Focus on how they transition. Maybe have some of them larger and some smaller. You know, it's it's really important to switch this up. You don't want to get stuck in a position where everything is boxy. Um, yeah, so that's my critique. I see this a lot, almost in, I think, most of the submissions. So uh, I really like what you did here. You know, you followed the concept correctly. Uh, I like that you inset all the pieces. I like the scale. I like the overall proportions. I think you did a great job on the overall feel and proportion of everything. You know, decent job inter improvising the back of the concept. And, it, you know, I like that you did all these uh, extra details. You know, you were really thinking about how to possibly make these pieces work. So, overall, I would say, uh, last thing, I'm not a huge fan of this detail. I think it looks a bit more like corrugated steel like you'd see on maybe like a metal roof uh, and I would like to maybe see something more like a heat sink or something functional or something just graphic um, but yeah overall great submission uh, some interesting choices interesting wheels I like the wheels and uh, I like you how you decided to handle the forms on the front you know solid work but 
for basically everybody keep working on those medium forms keep working on those small bevels so all right florian i'm gonna show his art station give him some uh, promo he posted this on art station go follow him and check out his work there and he is a cool german guy so yep check out his stuff there let's talk about it in here though so first of all interesting ideas definitely took the concept and felt very comfortable being free with it some very unique and definitely out of the box and unusual choices stuff i never would have thought about i like the choice to have like this radiator how these plug in is interesting i like that you showed the plugs uh, and how they plug in that's cool um yeah interesting some of these design choices are interesting so i'm gonna go into my critique now uh actually first let me let, give me one second okay i just want to make sure there's no other material like renders because i didn't want to only give feedback on his render and not somebody else's that wouldn't be fair so all right first feedback i think the thing that for me as soon as i instantly open it uh the first thought i had before i looked at everything else is i really think that the wheels are much too soft they look very uh very lumpy and not very cleanly modeled or designed and i think that's my biggest complaint on the design if i had some feedback yeah clean up the wheels make the patterns a bit better i know it's rubber but it's too soft even uh, like real life tires actually are a bit more crispy and have a bit more of a strong uh, feeling to them. So a bit harder edges. I would say my second feedback, you know, I'm not giving, I'm not judging the designs based on the renders, but the render for me is very hard to see, you know, so it's hard to also judge what I'm looking at. My first thing I would say for everybody who's rendering, and I'm going to have to give this feedback a few times, avoid pure black. Pure black, when stuff fades to pure black, is very difficult to read. So change your levels a bit. You know, focus on your lighting a bit more. Uh, you know, try and get some nicer shading going on. Because right now, to be honest, the lighting looks a bit broken. And I'm having trouble uh, understanding some of the things that are going on you know i don't know if you don't have gi or dynamic shadows on uh but yeah it's it's a bit hard for me to to read what's going on like especially uh on a lot of these areas you know where it's pure black as well and so just try and avoid in your renders but in your lighting not just in photoshop in your lighting avoid pure black very important you know it's one thing that'll elevate your lighting so uh yeah so feedback about the design and modeling I would say overall, uh, you know, you took some nice risks, but I feel like my feedback is the same as the last ones, you know. I can tell that the modeling in some places is uh, maybe a bit messy. Like for example, you know, these aren't very strong curves, like they have a weird slope to them, bit irregular. I would definitely look in a mechanical design for a lot more structure and accuracy. Uh, I'm not a fan of this handle. I think that it looks, it doesn't look elegant. It looks, uh, because it's just like these two random shapes, it looks like maybe something I would see on a kid's toy. And I feel like, you know, you definitely want to have a bit more structure, a bit more elegance. Try and focus on looking at you know maybe different product designs like let's just look up uh, on pinterest like a uh, handle i have no idea what's going to show up by the way but yeah like try and think of elegance and maybe not even elegance maybe utilitarianism so for example like power drill there's still like this this sense of shape and flow uh, to all of the handle shapes, but it's still utilitarian. It's still nice design. 
and uh, a bit interesting, but it's still, you know, a drill. So uh, definitely, I think this is actually the one thing for me that I really dislike. Um, my next feedback, uh, same thing as the other ones. Try and focus on how things transition a bit more. I feel and uh, focus on medium forms. And so to make that a bit more clear, like let's say you have your big shapes, right? Let's say that the main form is a box like this. Okay. So your medium form changes are going to be these ones where you cut like volumes out of the box. So like you have this, uh, this plane here, this is a medium form change. But what about the small ones? And I would say most of the most of the uh, submissions are missing these small form changes, and it's I think it's the thing that I was looking forward to seeing the most, and I feel like most people uh, struggled with. So, for example, breaking up like adding maybe a bevel here, so that it reflects the light a bit better and adds some nice volume between the pieces rather than just hard edges. Uh, I like that you made this unique kind of Y shape, but I think that, again, maybe the shapes are a bit too random. Like, I think if you had a curve here and then had some structure to contrast, like a strong shape, these shapes at a, at a harsh angle would read a lot nicer. Because right now at this angle, they're not very clear and they're a bit too lumpy. So I think I would have looked for a bit more structure in supporting details you know, maybe some small details. And again, like not just adding hard bevels. Uh, I think that that's the biggest thing that I, I, I see a lot is that people are adding all these hard bevels. So try and again, like I gave in the feedback here, add some finesse to your bevels, you know. Think about how deep your cuts are. Like for example, one thing a lot of people don't pay attention to is the value of their surface details. When you have a surface detail that's very deeply inset, it's going to have a very strong value. But when you have a surface detail that's very close to the surface, it's going to be more like a massage rather than a punch in the face. And so something that I think, you know, for me when I realized this was a very big moment, and I think most people don't know this, and so they're either making stuff too shallow or too deep. And here I'd say you have a mix of both. And so whatever you choose, deep or shallow, do it with intent, with purpose. Uh, but yeah, so as far as interpreting the concept functionally, A+, plus, great job. As far as form design, I think that you definitely need to uh, focus on the same things as a lot of the other people in here. Uh, you know, just having a bit more of that subtlety, a bit more of that finesse to things. I would like to say my last critique, you know, it kind of has to do with the handle too. I know you try to make it look comfortable, but I think it's a bit too crazy. And also, uh, sorry, before I get in the last critique, I think screws also you need to be careful with. Screws can make stuff look very low tech. And this screw is very large and uh, very low tech looking because it's a Phillips head. I think it's important if you're doing high tech stuff, if you do a Phillips head screw, you know, try and make it smaller and a bit more uh, angular. I like some of these things, by the way. I like your tech, your overall tech stuff's great. You know, I like the switches, it's awesome. But the design and, and, and uh, how you tackle the forms needs work. Like here, this is pretty messy. And I feel like this is, uh, again, kind of like the handle. It's a very strange shape. And so I think that you definitely uh, definitely should work a bit more on your shape design, understanding of forms and some of these fundamentals. But yeah, overall, really good ideas and trying to bring something new to the table. I like it. All right. Next one, and by the way, that was, yeah, so that was Florian Benedict. We did Flip Flap, Eat to Go, and now let's do uh, Michael Kaltz. I don't know if I'm saying your name right or wrong. Sorry if I'm not. Uh, let's show your portfolio since you posted on ArtStation. So 
Oh, I spelled your name wrong. My bad. Uh, causes. And yeah, so overall, uh, again, render doesn't count in this competition, just form. But I will say, and I will give some feedback on render in a second, but let me just show your portfolio, show some of the work you put into your submission. You know, I, I saw uh, the video and it was really cool to see. So yeah, so parts are animating out. Uh, there's a bit more thought put into how stuff comes apart. So like, for example, here, you can see the back opens, the side opens, nice secondary animations. I noticed it. Don't think I didn't. And uh, yeah, you know, very clear separation between all of the parts, but also stayed v relatively close to the concept. Uh, yeah, so this is um, Michal, Michal, Mitchell, Michael. I'm not sure how to pronounce your name. Uh, sorry. But yeah, this is uh, his portfolio. Go follow him on ArtStation. Cool stuff. All right, let's get into uh, let's get into feedback time. So, I'm going to give feedback on render, but it doesn't count towards the submission. So, overall, the render I think that you could work on color theory a bit. I don't think some of the colors are working together. Like for example, you have this blue, and these are very dark reds. And red is a very dangerous color, in my opinion and also yellow and I think overall your color theory is the thing that for me lets this render down the most so let's just do some quick changes I think that you know I need to select the red and change the red All right, cool. So let's just make this black and white for now. I think overall, you know, it's very cool colors and I, I really would like to see uh, just better colors. I think that's really the thing that's killing it for me the most because overall, you know, you got some nice materials going on, like the floor is looking good. The overall presentation I think is very clear. It's very nice, but I think that the uh, colors and some value stuff could use some work. So let me just do a quick feedback. And I think maybe using a more saturated color is going to help a bit. And so I think just maybe a bit more purple. And let's go here, add some color. And so I think when it comes to lighting, lights work best uh, oftentimes with complementary colors. So, you know, basically the opposite color on the color wheel. Uh, and sometimes with more similar colors. But in this case, I would say maybe not such a strong red. You know, don't you don't want to go full red. And also, whenever you do a glow, you do not want the glow to be uh, completely strong. You want to fade it off on the edges, always. Uh, otherwise, it's going to look a bit too aggressive and strong. Uh, so let me add an inner glow. And then s oftentimes we also want to add an inner glow to give it a, a, you know, to get away from this flat look. It's very important, I think. All right. Uh, overall, yeah, I, I just, I think the, the lights are a bit too strong and some of the color choices could be better. The metals are looking good. The plastics are looking good. Maybe add a bit of a roughness map to them. But uh, overall, you know, I think they look nice on the floor. Uh, since I don't want to talk too much about the render, but, you know, you put work into it, so I'm going to give feedback on it. I think you definitely need to focus on brightening your focal points, and you're going to instantly notice that within a few seconds, the design already feels 10 times stronger. And focus on separating the planes. So, like, the top plane, make it a different value, a brighter value than the side of the, the object, for example. Focus on brightening, you know, where you really want to have the, the viewer look and to guide the eye. It's, it's super important, I think. Quick tip, uh, if you want to make it pop just a little bit, you know, you can use the uh, camera raw editor and pump some of these uh, values on the tone curve up. Uh, 
and then maybe use uh, some complementary colors and the shadows and highlights to help balance out. Uh, because it's like a big layer over your image, it helps to balance out a little bit the um, the values. All right, cool. So enough about the render. Let's talk about the design. So I would say overall, I think that this is very nice. I like how you added a lot of patterning, like this uh, fading pattern. I don't know if I'm necessarily a huge fan of it. Actually, you know what I am? I like this pattern. And you know what else? I like that you took the time to make it fade. That's a nice extra mile. And I actually wasn't sure at first. You know, when I first saw this triangle pattern, uh, I think I think it's a bit random. It doesn't necessarily fit the design of the rest of the model, but I'll tell you what I do think. And I think that I like I like that you did it well because this shape here and how these things are working, you did a good job. Like I like that this uh, flat part crosses the plane of this cut line uh, and it also has a nice shape how it terminates and leads into this design. That's awesome. Uh, it's definitely something I wouldn't have expected from people because it's definitely pretty pro integration. I think you could have though taken it a step further. I feel like this point that it goes to is maybe a bit too much and I would have liked to see maybe a bit of a, a blunted edge here. And then this one, I think staying a point is fine, but I think it's maybe a bit too pointy. I like that it breaks a silhouette. I like that you integrated it well, good job. I like that you cut in these edges, but I will say this. I think that you still need to work on really finessing your, your bevels and your edges just a bit more. I think it's you're going towards a more realistic look, but I feel like the problem is when you have details like this, which aren't very realistic, uh, I think it's fine here because it's thin, but when you have this, this is where you should really go crazy on these like these areas. And so having this balance between realistically thin edges and crazy edges is important. Uh, you did a pretty good job of following, you know, the reference as I'd expect. Um, again, it's interesting how people chose this uh, pretty universal design language. I think though that you could have maybe finessed this area a bit more. It feels a bit blocky you know, maybe echoing some of the elements like the rubber feet pads to the front or uh, maybe thinning them out so that they don't feel so blocky would have been nice. It's a bit too much. I would say, you know, overall you did a good job. I don't like that there's lights on the handles and I don't like that they're red. I think the lights are kind of uh, killing it for me a bit. But again, it's not about the render, so I'm gonna let it pass. Uh, you know, you did fade in this form, so that's nice to see too. And it's interesting to see how you uh, kind of made a pointy form here. That's something I actually wouldn't have done myself, but it's again, it's something interesting and it kind of goes to show how, you know, so many people will interpret one form in t like 20 different ways. So that's really cool to see. I like that this form wraps around here, by the way. You know, actually, if I were to model it, I might not have done that, but I like it. It's interesting, it's a unique choice, so. Cool, good job, like the paneling. I'm not a huge fan though, personally, of this form change. I don't like that it gets fat here and then thin again. And it's like, there's just a bit of, it's a bit weird to me how these parts are working. Uh, I think I would have liked to see a bit more structure, you know, like this length and this length is almost even. And to me, it feels a bit too even. I, I would have definitely liked to see this form change uh, potentially starting a bit more at the base rather than having this kink in the middle. So that's that's my main critique. I think that you handled the wheels probably the best. Uh, I think that the wheels are definitely handled well. You interpreted the forms nicely. I would have still liked to see a... Um, I would have definitely liked to see uh, a slight 
maybe less of a gap between the cap and the wheel, but at the same time, I also like your interpretation. So I'm, I'm not going to, and also a bit more of a curve, like I had said in the other ones. So I'm not gonna really say anything about that. Um, I like how you interpreted the back. I like how you had these details like uh, beveled on the edges so that the detail, the lights wrap around the edges. That's really cool. That's awesome. This is the type of form subtlety I'm looking for. Uh, and you did a lot of nice form subtleties. Again, the lights are kind of killing it for me. I wish it was rubber maybe. And I also wish that maybe instead of being lights, you know, on this functional area and so strong, if you know, if you've got this nice curve here, it would have actually been a perfect opportunity to have a shape contrast by having an angular piece of rubber break the silhouette. So we get like this mix between crisp and soft and it gives a nice micro silhouette break. So I think that was a missed opportunity for sure. Uh, overall, you did a decent job with the, the small, the micro forms, but I still, you know, you definitely took a step further and added them here, but I think I would have liked to see something a bit more interesting. Um, and maybe not so curved, but that's just my opinion, you know. I think, hmm, I guess it's fine, but I think... I think maybe it's a bit too simple looking and we could have had a bit more finesse, but I do like it in the context of the other ones being curved. So it looks like basically everything that's a battery has its own curved shape language. Uh, as far as these details, good job, you know, trying to break the box, have some things coming in and some things coming out. But I feel like uh, I don't like this detail because it's too random. I don't like that it terminates here in these triangles, and I definitely would have integrated it better. And so this is again another place, and here, where I think you need to finesse your, your bevels a bit more and focus a bit better on your small bevels. I think that's probably, as far as like designing cool small bevels, I think it's something that you need to do to push this more. You did a good job here representing materials. I just want to say that. Great job. Uh, with how you beveled stuff and treated the forms. Um, but yeah, so that's my critique. Uh, a lot of the same things as other people, but I think you definitely elevated and interpreted a lot of the forms very well, and that I appreciate. But work on the color theory. Oh, I also want to show this. I love the shapes. I fucking love the shapes on the side. I love the thickness of them. I love the connection point. Uh, I like the vents on the back. So that's great. Great job. Again, you could finesse it more, but it's great. I like the uh, inset pieces with the secondary dark p parts. I love this choice. So yeah, overall, really great submission. Awesome to see. All right, let's uh, go to Milan. So Milan is in the mentorship challenge tier, the mentorship tier. And so uh, he's not, He's going to be graded only in the mentorship tier uh, group because it's not fair because I'm giving feedback to people in the mentorship tier. So uh, it's not fair for them to have the same uh, the same chance at a prize. All right, so let's bring this into Photoshop. Try that again. All right, cool. All right, so my feedback, uh, basically, I really like what you did with the uh, panels in the back. That's cool. I really like uh, these feet. I like the little details here. They're yellow. That's cool. I like the patterning. Uh, I think that the biggest problem I have right now, and it's again, it's about the render, so I can't count it in the design, but these lines in the background are way too thick and they're way too distracting. And right now, uh, I'm having a hard time looking at the object because they're, it's very bright, just like the object. And I think you could crop it better because right now, you know, I feel like it's kind of lost in the image. Um, let's bring this in. 
And I think that, you know, you, you definitely need much thinner lines. You know, let me quickly just do a quick paint over and you'll see what I mean. And it also adds some elegance, you know, when everything feels chunky, it definitely makes it feel very um, cartoonish and toyish. And so I think your lines are not helping you right now. And so you can see just even making the lines smaller makes it way less distracting and really helps to make this object pop. It's more of like, you know, a massage than a punch in the face. Uh, and then I think if you had more of them, but very thin, you know, I think, I think it's going to read much better this way because right now having such big panels that on a white background makes it very unclear what the scale is. And so it could either be way too small or way too big. I have no idea. Um, yeah, so that's definitely something I would focus on. Uh, but as far as the design, you know. I like that you inset some of these pieces. I like how you treated some of the, uh, sorry, let me switch to red. I like that you inserted some of these parts, uh, but I feel like overall the forms are definitely, you know, you, you added some bevels here and that's actually something I did like. I like the overall interpretation. Like these shapes are cool. I like this like big dog bone shape. I like this detail. I like how you handled the vent. It feels very, uh, like small and intricate you know it's not too big and cartoony but uh i do feel like what is big and cartoony is some of the forms you know i feel like while they're thick in the drawing they could definitely have been thinned out or maybe have like some really nice uh, bevels in them but instead they're very blocky and i do i do have a problem with this a lot you know i feel like overall it's very blocky uh, whether it's from the batteries to the uh, to the details here and that's something I very much liked about this one is that it it had enough curve to break up a lot of these places and the proportions uh, felt very very balanced and here I'm not really feeling like you know the forms are being used to their full potential like here for example I would have liked to have seen some nicer large form changes, some less rushing straight into the bevels, and overall more attention to uh, the details. I think for me also, I'm a bit having a hard time to really see what's going on with the white background. Uh, my next feedback, I feel like a lot of the details you did add are maybe a little bit too large. Like a lot of these pieces, are all the same size. I would have liked to see maybe like a nice balance. So here is actually a better example. You know, you have medium, large, small, and then very thin. But on the other side, everything is very fat. And I think that you definitely could have finessed your bevels much more. You know, right now everything is kind of a box. So for example, like this piece, and you know, we can go over this stuff. Uh, more in the mentorship tier and like I can you know remodel some of these designs uh, in our next class section cl class se session but just even like subtle things to really like catch the light and break up these forms I think would have been really nice to have even if it's like a few millimeters of inset with a nice faded bevel you're gonna get this really nice uh, Ele elegant and finessed feel rather than uh, blocky shapes with tight bevels. And so I think for me that's uh, the biggest problem I have. Uh, I like that you, I like what you did with this uh, triangular detail. That's really nice. It's uh, not something I was expecting to see, but yeah, that's my feedback. Looks cool. Uh, the white was definitely unexpected and welcome change. So it's nice to switch it up. All right, my first feedback, uh, and this is Rikers. Let me see. Let me see who all posted. Okay, so I have one person's art station left to show. 
All right, so <coughs> Riker, uh, he made this one. It's going very graphic here, but I need to say my biggest feedback is I can't see it. And I noticed a lot of people are doing this. So again, I'm going to reiterate, avoid pure blacks when you're rendering uh, because it makes it hard to see. And I'm in a very dark room. I'm not in a dark room, but I'm also not in a very bright room. And so I'm having still a bit trouble to understand what I'm looking at. And so it actually is making it a bit hard for me to critique right now. But I have some viewports, so I will critique it on this basis. Uh, yeah, so the um wait did i mix up two okay just a second let me make sure i didn't mix up two i just need to make sure i didn't mix up these uh really quickly I think I did and I don't want to okay yeah I did Alright, so just let me make sure really quickly. Unfortunately, I can't pause this version. Okay, let me. Okay, yeah, yeah, I did. Okay. So. Okay. Alright. Let me move these really quick, and then all will be well in this world. Alright, cool. So, Riker submission. Uh, yeah, let's uh, just talk about the render really quick. Again, uh, too dark. I like that you took the initiative, though, with the graphic look. Uh, the materials, though, are a bit hard to tell what's what. You know, like, is the uh, yellow stuff, is it metal? Is it plastic? What is it? Uh, and for me, I, I would like to see a bit more material variety, maybe adding some tiling textures to help add some uh, textural detail to it than just raw metal. And I think it's going to help you a bit. Like here you have some repeating patterns. That's cool. I think you could definitely take it a few steps further. And I really love that you have like this uh, like liquid thing. You know, there's a lot of thought put into this. A lot of unique thought I wasn't thinking of. So I really appreciate this. I appreciate going out on a limb and trying some different stuff. And I like the work that you put into it. It's really cool to see. I actually wouldn't ever thought of like some sort of canisters like this with like liquids inside so I also like the colors a bit I think they could be a bit uh, more harmonious they are a bit uh, too much purple and green and not enough in between so I'll, I'll just give a quick feedback on that but uh, as far as my feedback you already know for the render you know focus a bit on how you're lighting it because right now it's definitely a bit too dark I think lighting as far as presentation could be the biggest thing to work on uh, let me go to here, see if we can make these hues a bit better. So it's really important when you're working with stuff that has crazy colors that you uh, really work on making all of those colors have uh, harmony or work together. And you know, uh, there's, I don't know how, how well we can push them in Photoshop right now very quickly, but Like adding a bit more of that yellow back in and maybe changing the tint of the green just a bit so it's uh, a bit cooler to ma mix with the cool of the uh, purple but then having a bit more of the yellow be uh, orangey so it's like a warmer color to contrast the uh, cool colors you know and trying to mix these two together so I think this is something that definitely could have pushed it a bit farther is if you have a better color theory so work on your colors work on your lighting work on your rendering but let's get into the design what really matters for this challenge uh, yeah so let's go through your images so everybody sees the work you did you know 
talking about tires, LED screens, turbo cooler, exhaust, power level indicator, cool stuff. I love the initiative. But this is the most important thing for the contest. So, I would say my, let's go to overview, I mentioned start there. I would say the biggest thing for me is actually, okay, I like that you went and you added in a lot of small details, okay? It's very nice, good thing to do, but I think overall you probably added them too soon. I'm not a huge fan of uh, like a lot of these transitions. It's very hard edged when I'd be usually looking for something a bit more soft and elegant. And so right now it's feeling a bit too simplified for my taste. Um, and I feel like you definitely could finesse your forms a lot more. And I think it stems from like all of the other submissions where you're going too far into detail too quick. And you need to learn, every it's not even just that you need to learn, you always need to work on improving You need to work on improving your ability to stay in the blockout stage and really nail those uh, big design choices early on. And the secondary ones can be represented, like in a very rough blockout stage, simple shapes, but nothing concrete. And I know all of us want to run into detail instantly. Of course we do. It's what makes, you know, uh, it's what we get a lot of the pleasure out of the design, right? But but if you do this, you're really shooting yourself in the foot. So you need to be careful. It's interesting to see, you know, how you did the tires and these sorts of details. Um, I really like the fans too, but I would say the fans do need a cover. I would have really liked to have seen a cover because, you know, nobody wants to put their hands in an unprotected fan area like you have here. It's a good idea. I like it. Good choice. Oh, and this is cool. This is really cool. I like that you added like a footstep or something. I don't know what it is, but it looks cool. It looks functional. I'm actually curious what is it. It looks like it might touch the ground, but interesting. Uh, I like that you added a curve to the tires and you pushed them in, where I feel like oftentimes uh, it's easy to just make things boxy. And so that's a really nice plus. But I feel like while you did managed to put in a lot of interesting ideas I feel like there is maybe overall still a lack of understanding of form like you did add some medium forms in here I applaud you for this I'm happy about this but I feel like there's a lot of things that also let it down like how these are integrated feels very weird and haphazard uh, just like very quickly done same thing here like I wish there was a lot more harmony between the parts So I feel like you had a lot of really good ideas Okay, wait just a sec. You know what? I'm sorry. I didn't actually see this part. I Like that then I'm okay with this part of the design, but I wish that it was still more finessed and outwardly clear like maybe instead there's some sort of locking mechanism here and then something that's like modeled in that shows that it can be pushed in or something that implies to the user that it's recessed. Like I guess I could say that this sh tells me that this is where it goes, but I would like to see a lot more focus on how you're beveling stuff, you know? I think that's the biggest problem for me with this design is you did actually break the forms, but you didn't do a very elegant uh, job of it and like a lot of the you still have a lot of exposed edges okay I see now there's a vent I think that the vent cover is maybe a bit too busy and if it's more of a mesh cover it wouldn't necessarily make sense in a functional way so I in design wise it, it's not reading very strongly so I think that you know the the mesh cover Milan did is maybe a bit more in line with what would be reading well for this design and also baking better if you were making a game model. So, excuse me. Yeah, I like that. It's interesting, the pedal idea. Um, yeah, overall, really great ideas, but you need to work on your the cohesiveness of them and the visual aspect. I think they're great. 
uh, design, but the the cohesion and the visual aspect, like making the forms elegant, making them beautiful and high tech, I think is where you need to work on a bit more. And I would definitely take a look at, you know, when I, I'm thinking about what I like the most, I think this is actually probably my favorite uh, form that I've seen so far. I, I really like this. So, uh, and how he had a curve here, but a crisp edge here. It's great stuff. And so I think this is where you definitely should focus on improving. Um, but yeah, really unique ideas. You put a lot of thought into it, and I appreciate it a lot. You know, I, I see all of the work and effort you put in. So it's great to see. All right, so we have two more submissions. Square Adam. Square Adam put a lot of thought into this. We got ergonomics. We got millimeters. We got batteries. We got, you know, mind map. Like uh, Mike Hill is always preaching. It's good stuff, you know. I myself like to do these from time to time, uh, with or without a uh, you know an image. Uh, and I like that you put all of this work into it. It's definitely far beyond the work that I would have put into it, and I almost feel like you have a background probably in product design. So, or some sort of um, more real world type of thing. But. It's also very important to me how the um, how the forms are represented and the visual design of it, not just the functional design of it. And I feel like, in my opinion, uh, let's start with the render because that's the one thing that actually I've started with for almost everything. So let's open the render. Basically, I like that you're doing a crazier colors render, but the problem for me is that all of the renders have this uh, si this situation. They're all crazy color renders. And so I can't actually, like when I see it um, on ArtStation, I actually don't really get a good sense of the design. And I don't get a good feeling overall of what I'm looking at. And that's why I think it's very important to have like very, you know, monochrome stuff, uh, very clear stuff that tells the viewer, like, this is my design, this is my model. And then maybe you have a few cool, crazy renders. So I think this is my biggest feedback. My second one is, you know, because they're going to pure black, it makes almost all of the detail get lost in the render. And so I, I think you definitely need to work on lighting and do some more traditional renders before you do crazy ones. Because remember, your portfolio is a uh, sales pitch. And if I don't s understand what I'm looking at in two seconds, uh, I'm not going to want to buy it. You know, it's always about that initial reaction. So that's my feedback as far as presentation. Again, doesn't count in the, uh, the judging. So ideas, function, thought, top notch, great thought. I think for me, though, the thing that I, I have a problem with is that it feels like a real product, but something that I wouldn't, it looks like a real world generator, but not necessarily like the coolest one, you know, it's not like, it looks more like it, what I was looking for was something a bit more high tech, something a bit more future, and while it's functional, I feel like it's not exactly, um, as far as design wise, not very, uh, as interesting as I would have liked it to be. I like certain aspects of it, and so I'll talk about some of them. Um, Photoshop, please open stuff. All right, thank you. You know, I like that there's things like, uh, I like that these details are crossing over this plane change here. That's nice. I like some of the proportions, you know, like this is small, this is big. I like that you're making it bigger here and then thin on the edges. I like the uh, sh spacing of a lot of these objects. You know, you're definitely understanding 70, 30, and you are finessing the overall, uh, the overall forms. You're actually doing all of these things that I like, but I feel like still, also I like that you're alternating these different size details. That's a nice choice than having the bottom have a different thing. But overall, I still feel like 
while it's believable and it's looking good, it's functional. I feel like there's nothing new here. And like I I love how you're approaching it. Like you you have all of the right ideas. You have all of the right things you're doing. You know, I like that this is inset and it's a functional idea. Like it's protected. It's at an angle, it's diagonal. It's got a thin bezel. It doesn't look stylized too much. But I also feel like I would like to see a bit of stylization in this design and I feel like this is why for me, it's not really hitting the mark, and I feel like this is where you need to improve the most, I guess. Because I would like to see you push maybe a bit out of your comfort zone, because I'm willing to bet that your comfort zone is definitely uh, this type of stuff, where it's more real. And you are very probably a more mechanical thinker, and there's definitely always two ways to think about designs, which is form and function, obviously. But... The thing is, we're b all inclined to one direction or another. Oftentimes, this is built on our experience. So, for example, uh, my first designs, I had to design abstract shapes. Not necessarily because it was my strong suit, but because it was my job. And so, for me, I really focused on form and shape. And so for me to integrate function back in, while I do have a, you know, a background in function as far as like a, uh, an, a passive understanding, not a product design background or anything, but my, my strength originally was mostly shapes because I did it for so many years. And because I learned it shape in a vacuum, I wasn't focusing at all on form, or sorry, on function. So for me, shape w was where I felt the most strength. And so for me, I had to go backwards and start integrating more function and believability in. But I'm always trying to merge the two in a nice way and bring something new, bring a new shape to the table or a new form or mix some forms or place details in a new way. And so for you, I feel like this is the thing, you know, there's, I think, a difference between maybe product design that's like utilitarian and product design that's artistic. And I, I would like to see you push this into a more artistic way. Because as far as how you're thinking, great. Artistically though, shape-wise, like, I think it can be more unique. It feels like if I saw this and you told me it was a generator I could buy at the store and you rendered it nicely, I might believe you. And for me, I think that's the thing that I would like to see you push more, you know, in the future going forward is try and let go. I, it's great to think about function, but that's your strong suit. Uh, focus on your weaknesses, you know, and really try to uh, try and, you know, like you have here, you have some more abstract stuff. I would definitely suggest trying to focus on taking these abstract shapes and, uh, you know, marrying it with the function a bit more. So, like, if something is boxy, try a crazy angle. If something is regular, try making it irregular, you know. Uh, look at it and ask yourself, have I seen this shape before? You know, instead of placing maybe a bolt in every corner, place them not regularly. You can find a way to make it feel functional. I guess I always like to think about it is like I try to find this the coolest way to do a simple thing. Like if I have a handle, I try to find the coolest way to make a handle. And it all comes from, you know, visual library and um, how you're thinking about design, whether you're limiting yourself too much by function. Because if you're limiting yourself mentally by function, uh, your design is going to look very limited by function. And so I think this is definitely where you have the biggest area to improve. But is an interesting mix of like what I like and also what I think uh, needs to be better. So overall, uh, yeah, solid entry and definitely a great effort. It's awesome. Uh, I'm really excited to see what you would do if you let yourself be more free instead of just focusing on this functional stuff and to really focus on form design and understanding form design and proportion a bit more. So yeah, good entry. Uh, 
keep tbnile. I'm not sure how to say your username on Discord, so tbnile, I'll say. Um, yeah, so let's look at this last one before we talk about the next challenge. So I would say same feedback about the render. Again, doesn't renders don't count, but I'm having a very hard time seeing it. And so it's a bit difficult for me to critique. I believe this is the latest render, but uh, to quickly summarize what you should improve as far as rendering, uh, same thing as the other ones, as my other uh, feedbacks for the other, the other entries. Focus on brightening stuff that's important. You know, you don't want to have everything very dark. You want people to see the work that you did. It's important. Uh, next thing, look up three-point lighting and um, try adding a rim light around the side of the object to help silhouette it so that people can really see the design. Because right now, I'm having a very hard time uh, seeing and understanding what I'm looking at on most of the renders. And then just work on your values a bit, you know? And yeah, cool. So now that we can almost see it, let's talk a bit about the design. Because it's actually, I think it's a very solid entry, but it's very hard for me to see it. Yeah, like I like a lot of these things. Like you're, uh, I like that you added these layers of materials and cool shapes. I like these sci-fi details you added. Um, I like the layers of details here. It actually feels very refined. I would say that this is one of the most refined ones. You added these nice soft bevels here. Uh, like, sorry, like this hard bevel, but then a soft one here. I like the proportion of this bevel here. Like you added enough curve to make it feel round, but not so much that it feels uh, like on the handle that it feels like cartoony. So it's a very nice balance. Um, you handled this form change like I uh, believe it was. Let's see, which one was it? Yeah, like uh, flip flap, flap, fluff flip, fluff flip. Sorry. <laughs> I think I said it wrong this whole time, fluff flip. Uh, you handled the form change the same way. That's interesting to see, and I actually like it, just like I liked it on his. And I think because the the shape here is going to smaller while it's thick, I think it looks elegant enough. I like how you handled a lot of these things. You know, this is really good stuff. I don't, w I, I like the wheels here, but I feel like this pattern is maybe a bit too noisy. And I would have liked to see a bit more of a, um, a bit more of a pattern that interlocks because they're kind of like cut like this. And I would like to see it maybe more if it's like one shape interlocks with the next one. And so that way, instead of just getting cut off and looking very noisy, it would feel a bit more integrated and nice. And I think that's something that it, the wheels are feeling a bit too noisy. Um, I think I would like to see maybe a bit of asymmetry. Like, for example, getting rid of one of these. So it's just like one circle instead of two. I think will look a lot nicer. You know, you don't want to always have everything be symmetric, especially when, like, it is symmetric uh, m all the way to the top on the back so trying just to maybe break up that symmetry a bit could be something interesting uh, but overall you know I like what you did um, personally though I like uh, this form change on the back I think the most because it's very soft and elegant and it feels more like a unibody where I feel like this one is a bit more hard edged and angular than I was looking for and so yeah you have while everybody had freedom you know I'm also judging it based on how I think that you went with the freedom uh, like where you took it and so 
It's interesting, but I think it could have been simplified. It's a bit too m too strong. It's a bit too chunky shapes, and I think a bit too heavy-handed. Uh, I like the forms that you have on the wheels, and again, I like this stuff. Although I'm not a huge fan of these repeating bar shapes. I think bar shapes you need to be very careful with when you're designing. And I would like to see maybe another layer of integration, like some sort of metal around it and a detail. Uh, overall, I, l I really love what you did. Maybe even just a bit more forms, just something to give it a bit more of a pop and not so streamlined. Uh, but overall, I really like this area. I like what you did with a lot of the stuff. The lights aren't overwhelming. Uh, the lights are nice, even though it's not part of the contest. Uh, let's let's look at it here. I feel like what you did on the other side is interesting, but I think maybe a bit boring uh, when I look at the rest of the design, and I would have liked to see it be a m bit more interesting. Like, uh, it feels a bit too real world, you know, with the bolts on all four sides. And then I feel like then it's contrasted, though, by a very random shape and I w usually when I have something like this I would maybe push it in more make it be something that looks a bit uh, less um, how do I explain it okay so when you have a detail or like a space I think it's important to uh, try and offset it so it's not the same length all the way around and so I would have done something like maybe blunt this edge or just something to make it feel not so uh, basic, but also kind of random because it feels then like very sci-fi when the rest of it's feeling more realistic. So it's kind of like a weird mix, I think. Um, I'm not a huge fan of like the uh, shape here because of this. It's just a bit too curved for me. And so then this area here starts to get a little bit wonky, like wibbly and wobbly. But I do like that you curved it here. That's cool to see. And I like that you made it asymmetric on this side. So I also like that you added a nice transition. So like where stuff, like all the details are ending, or sorry, where, where the lines end, like you have this line, right? And all the details kind of focused uh, and clustered in smart areas. And it's not all over distracting so really nice choices uh, I like this one work on your rendering for sure and just keep pushing you know while there's things like you work you understand I think uh, pretty well and you have a good feeling for certain things always keep pushing those things that you're strong at and try and push your proportions and your form understanding more and I think that you can make some really cool stuff. So it's cool to see this one. Uh, it's a really good interpretation and cool work. All right, so went through everybody. I'm gonna next post this on uh, Facebook, or sorry, on uh, Facebook and ArtStation. I'm gonna link everybody who posts on ArtStation's things on my blog post. Um, I would say my biggest feedback, you know, just to recap, everybody. Focus on the subtleties of your bevels. Focus on your forms. Focus on how things transition. And stop making your renders dark. I need to be able to see it. It's important. All right. Uh, yeah, I just want to thank everybody, you know, who, who joined this thing. Uh, the winners are going to get, the winners are going to get one month in a design challenge and a free t-shirt. Uh, with a design that is going to be brand new and I'll be making that soon because I need to render out some new projects and I'm going to generate some t-shirts based on some of these projects so with that said let's talk about the last thing on the agenda and again huge thank you for everybody joining this it's awesome to see people modeling my concepts and it's awesome to see everybody growing and learning from each other um, yeah, so thank you, and thanks for supporting my project on Patreon. Uh, yeah, with all that said, the next challenge. That was a modeling challenge we just did, and this one is going to be a uh, 
going to be a design challenge this time. And so what are we designing? I want to make a medical device because medical device, you know, we did a vote on the Patreon page and you guys voted for a uh, medical device. So this is going to be a handheld bone repair machine. And I was thinking it's something a bit more sci-fi, you know, it's uh, not something that's like literally digging into your arms and ripping it open. Uh, it's something that's weaving it together. It's like a futuristic machine, you know, like something out of Elysium, you know, you wave it over your arm and it repairs it. So basically I built a brief of the things that I want to see in this design and treat it kind of like I am your client and you are my designer and I'm going to judge stuff based on how well that you hit the brief but also how good it looks visually you know I'm looking for something sleek something elegant something cool something with unique forms with unique ideas um, and you know again rendering is optional because I know people don't have time so I'd rather see a really beautiful viewport render than a quickly made render. Like I'd rather see a viewport screenshot that's really nice with some nice viewport materials. Because I, I render doesn't do anything for me, you know, if the design isn't good. So I'd rather, if you don't have time, spend more time on the design. Don't worry about the render. If you have time to do stuff for the render, go for it. In the end, I'm going to rate people and judge this based on how interesting your forms are, how good your ideas are hitting the brief. Um, but when it comes down to it, the beauty is my most important thing because, you know, you can make something functional and ugly or simple or very blunt. But I'm looking for elegance. I'm looking for uniqueness. I'm looking for things I've never seen, shapes, forms, etc., ideas. And yeah, so basically let's go over it quickly. So diagnostic screen, you know, I want to be able to have information when I'm using this device. Maybe I can see like the patient. Maybe I can see through their bones like an x-ray. And you know, all of these things I'm saying are going to generate ideas for you. Maybe it's just telling me how much is repaired. Maybe it shows me what part of the bone is broken. Maybe it shows me where I need to put it on their body like AR. Uh, I want it to be handheld. Uh, it needs to feel and look medical and patient friendly. You know, archetyping is very important in design. People need to look at a design and say like, oh, that's a power tool or that's a medical instrument, right? And when a patient has this thing next to them, do they want to be terrified or do they want to feel comfortable like they're going to be safe? Um, and you know what? I don't care so much if it looks comfortable, like, uh, like if it looks scary, but it looks badass. I'm fine with that too. Uh, so don't don't get too hung up on this one because I want to see something that looks cool most of all. So if that's getting in the way of making it look cool, don't care. Just kill it. Uh, form factor. Do whatever you want. You know, maybe it's like a tablet. Maybe it's like a gun. Maybe it's like a box. Maybe it's like, I don't know, like a bowl shape. Maybe it's like a cell phone. Maybe it's like a mouse. I don't know. I don't care how it's held. But as long as it's handheld, maybe one or two hands, doesn't matter to me. You know, it can be large, it can be small, it can be whatever. It's up to you guys. You know, I want you guys to have freedom. I want to see what you guys come up with. Uh, visually communicates bone repair unit. And so I, I added this, this, uh, oh, sorry, I just accidentally left the... Okay, yeah, so I added this uh, I added this little thing here, and basically I'm thinking, like, you know, maybe it uses some sort of energy or something to stitch the bones together or somehow manipulate the matter. And so maybe it has some sort of intricate top or, like, ending. I don't know. Or maybe it's, like, very simple, like a glowing energy point. There's a lot of things you can do to kind of uh, sell this to the viewer. And I don't necessarily know how you're going to do it or even if it's most important, but just make sure it's like kind of clear that it does something. Uh, it's non-invasive. This is not going to go into contact with the skin. 
It stitches and regrows bone dam and fixes bone damage and loss. So uh, it's not going to rip open your body. It's wireless, basically. Wireless bone repair. And focus on form design and ergonomics. Bonus for nice use of materials, graphics, and value. And by that, I just mean graphic design in your object, not even necessarily signage on the object. So, yep. Uh, one winner is going to be chosen from the mentorship tier, like the last challenge, and one person from the other Patreon tiers will be chosen as winners. So there's two winners. All participants are going to get feedback at the end, like in this video, and the prize is going to be, again, one t-shirt, and maybe I'll add something more like a print, but I, if I do, it'll be kind of a bonus thing, so it's not guaranteed. And Anybody who wins gets one free month in the mentorship tier, which is going to include, you know, feedback, lessons, classes, etc., access to previous classes. And so it's a lot of free learning material if you win uh, and personal growth that you'll be getting. Uh, and the mentorship tier, you know, we're basically going through and giving feedback and I'm helping to guide people in their careers and to also grow as artists. So, yep. Uh, got some cool stuff. It was awesome to see this challenge. The next challenge is going to take place in here, and I'm going to be posting this today. And it's going to be due in either a month or a month and a half. I need to decide because, you know, people actually didn't have enough time to do this last one. But I'm, I'm leaning towards, like, a month and a half, so, like, the end of January. So you get maybe like a few days from d December. That's what's going to happen. So at the end of January, this challenge is going to end, and I'll pick the winner shortly after. So, uh, yeah, awesome. Thanks for everybody who's participating. Thank you for supporting my Patreon. Thank you for everything. You know, this video is never about trying to call people out or make them feel bad. It's about helping people to grow. It's helping people to learn. And you should never, ever feel bad about your feedback. You should never... You should always be happy when you find something wrong because there's nothing worse in life than to not see where you can grow. And so I want to end it on that. Help each other grow. Post in the Patreon group and give each other feedback. Look for feedback and that's where you can get the most out of it. So, yep. Uh, thanks for supporting it and I'll see you guys in the next challenge and in the next videos.